All right, in this video, we're going to see how to tell an object's displacement from a velocity versus time graph. So in this graph, the object is starting at a speed of 20 meters per second, and it maintains that same velocity for the entire duration of the 16 seconds. So the question is, at the end of this time period, where is the object? So if we imagine the object starting at some random point, we know it's going 20 meters per second. It's positive, so it's going to the right at that speed for 16 seconds. So it's going to the right, it's traveling at 20 meters per second, and it does that for 16 seconds. Question is, how far does it go? So hopefully it makes sense to you that we would take this speed or velocity and multiply it by 16 seconds, right? If you go 20 meters every second and you do that for 16 seconds, how far do you go? And if you do that, you get 320 meters. Those are the units because meters per second times seconds, the seconds cancel. So that is how you do it with sort of a, like a velocity equation. But here's the trick with velocity versus time graphs. If you imagine a line here at what's called the origin, zero, you can find the displacement of an object by finding the area trapped underneath the graph by the velocity curve and the origin. So in other words, imagine this rectangle if you find the area of this rectangle, it will tell you the displacement. Now look at the dimensions of this rectangle. It is 20 high, and that's 20 meters per second, which is the velocity, and it's got a length of 16, which in this unit is seconds. So area is length times width. We're basically multiplying 20 by 16, which is what we did down here in the first place. So bottom line, the area of this rectangle will give me the displacement. If the object began at, called the zero, it'll be 320 meters away in 16 seconds. If we, you know, if we figured out at eight seconds where it was, it would be eight times 20, it'd be 160 meters away at eight seconds. But we're looking at the full graph, we wanna know how far away it is in, at 16 uh, seconds. So that is how we find displacement from a velocity versus time graph. But let's try another one. So in this situation, the object is beginning at 10 meters per second, and then it abruptly changes speeds. So in the first 20 seconds, we say, how far did it get? So again, imagine a rectangle. Imagine this line here at the origin at zero and find the area of this rectangle. So this is 10 by 20. So 10, again, meters per second, because that's units of velocity times 20, in this case, seconds, because that's the units down here. So in the first 20 seconds, it travels positive 200 meters. So from here, from zero to 20 seconds, it travels, if we're imagining an object, it goes 200 meters to the right. Now the question is, okay, all of a sudden its speed abruptly changes. It's still going to the right, it's still positive. Then it travels for another length of time. How far does it travel over that time? So now we want to find this area. So this has a height of 20 meters per second and a length of from 20 to 50 is 30 seconds. So don't make the mistake of going all the way to 50. So what is 20 meters per second times 30 seconds? It is positive 600 meters. So basically over this period, it goes 200 meters to the right. And over this period, it goes 600 meters to the right. So what is its total displacement? Just add these together the total displacement of the object is 800 meters to the right. It's positive, so it's to the right. So we just find the area trapped by, again, the origin line and the graph in question. Now let's look at this one. So here's our origin line, but now the graph in question is below the x-axis. It's no different. We're still gonna find the area, but now imagine an object that has a negative velocity. That just means it's going to the left. So it's going to the left at 10 meters per second. And how long is it doing that? According to this, it's for 50 seconds. So let's find this area trapped by this graph. So this distance, now we're gonna actually call it negative, even though you know distance is always, like an area can't be negative, but we're gonna imagine this, this is negative 10 meters per second, and the time is gonna be 50 seconds. So let's imagine 50 times negative 10, I get negative 500 meters. So that means that over 50 seconds, if you're traveling 10 meters per second, you will end up 500 meters to the left of where you started. So if we were measuring this, so your displacement is 500 meters to the left. So again, it's just finding the area. Uh, we're just, it's just gonna be a negative area, if you will, a negative displacement. All right, last one. So this is an interesting one in the sense that the velocity really changes 
because initially it's going positive six meters per second, meaning it's going to the right at six, and then abruptly here, its velocity switches to negative three meters per second. So now it's actually going left. So we have to break this up, just like we did before. We're gonna find this area, and then we're gonna find this area. So during this period from zero to eight seconds, it's traveling to the right. So its velocity, as we said, this region is six. This region here is eight. So eight times six is 48. This should be seconds actually. So over this period, I get a plus 48 meters. So if my object was here, it traveled 48 meters to the right during the first eight seconds. Then it started to go left, but it went left at a slower speed at three. So again, this part is three meters per second. We'll say it's negative. And this time is from eight to 20. So this is 12 seconds. 12 times negative three is negative 36. So if this is positive 48, this is negative 36. So what is the total displacement? So again, initially it went 48 to the right, then it backtracked 36. So my final position is here. And that is a total of 12 meters to the right. It's a positive 12 when we do this math out. So your full displacement would be positive 12 meters or just 12 meters. So that's how you make use of a velocity versus time graph to find your displacement. Now there are other ways to do this where it's not all rectangles. We're not gonna do that this unit, but we will look at it sometime probably in the future. But for now, just draw the origin, draw this line and just find all the areas trapped by the curve and add them together, and that will get your displacement. That's it. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.